Radhika 
handlebar and stamp his forehead with that handle. So that is like that kind of shape that even now those who follow in Shimananda line, they wear that kind of uh, tila. So then, then he did uh, bhajan, then his guru, Rida Chaitanya, um, Shimati Radhika at that time gave him the name Shyam Ananda. Shyam, Shyama, Shyam means Krishna and Shyama means brother. So Shyam Ananda, one who gives Ananda please to Shimati Radhika. She gave him directly, she gave him that name, Shyam Ananda. So some story goes that when his guru, Rida Chaitanya, heard that he changed his name, he, go, he was very angry with him and he beat him. And then in the dream, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared to Rida Chaitanya and showed him the, the beating mark on his own back. Another story is that Yudha Chaitanya tried to rub the tilak mark off and the tilak mark just became stronger and more fulgent. But Gurudev says that uh, he took shelter of Jiva Goswami with the blessings of Rida Chaitanya. So there was no, there was no, there was no question. Rida Chaitanya recognized Jiva Goswami as a higher Vaishnava and therefore there was no envy there whatsoever. So similarly, Shrinivas he was the disciple of Gopal Goswami. And Gopal Goswami encouraged him to go and take shiksha from Jiva Goswami. And Narutam, he was the disciple of Prabhupada Goswami, but then again he went and took shiksha from Jiva Goswami on encouragement of Prabhupada Goswami. So Shemananda, he was Kanaka Manjari in Krishna Lila. Shinivas Acharya, he was Mani Manjari. And Narottam Das, I heard Champa Manjari, I also heard Anvila, so different names. So then, many years later, Baladevi Virushna also worshipped these deities. How come? Because Baladevi Virushna took Shiv Diksha from uh, Radha, Radha, Radha Damodar Goswami in Puri, who was the disciple of Rasikananda, who was a disciple of Shamananda. So in this way, he came in that line, and that's how come he also worshipped Radha Shamasanda. So, Baladevi Dibushina, we heard on other times, the whole past times, how he um, was very, very learned from childhood. He, he went to different place, like, places and heard so much Shastra, and studied the, the, the this, the, the other Sampradaya Shastra and started also the, the, the commentary on the Dhaka Sutra of uh, um, the Mayavadi Shankar Acharya. So then later his guru, his, his Shiksha guru, Vishnu Chukhar Thakur, sent him to Jaipur to defend the, the conception of Parakiyava and uh, against the Samshri Sampradaya who insisted that Radharani should not be on the altar because she's not married to Krishna. So he went there very successfully, defeated all the big scholars, and then he wrote uh, uh, Vinda Bhashya, uh, our poetry in Vedanta Sutra. So all this pastime is associated with that temple. Now the main point is that uh, all these personalities, um, they took Shiksha from someone who is not a Diksha Guru, because Shiksha in our line is more prominent than Diksha. The main thing is, if someone, if someone is, is Bhagavad, is a pure devotee and can give higher Harikata, then naturally someone will, one will be attracted to that person, that devotee, pure devotee, to hear Harikata from him and to accept him as Bhajan Guru, like this. So, so many examples are there. Uh, Narottam Shinivas and Shamananda are there. Baladevi Dibushna is there. We don't consider uh, Radha Raman Goswami to be his guru. We consider Vishwana Chakarita to be his guru. The Goswamis, they never took Diksha from Mahaprabhu. There's no evidence. Jiva Goswami never took actually Diksha. But obviously, they were the direct disciples of Mahaprabhu by Shiksha. Uh, Raghunatha Goswami, we know his Diksha Guru is Yadunanda Rucharya, but who do we consider his direct gurus? Swarup Damodar and Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami. 
again by Shiksha. So the point is that we may take our enough for one guru and we may think just to bring us on board and to give us chance to connect and then we may take Shiksha from another guru who is more inspiring to us after we understand something about Bhakti. And then later we may take Shiksha from another, yet another guru. And that would be our main guru, Shiksha guru. Because in our line, Shiksha is prominent. We don't go by Pancharatric line, who took Diksha from whom, and that's the line. We go by Guru, uh, Bhagavad Guru Parampara line. Whoever is Bhagavad, then he is the next guru. Whoever has the quality of Bhagavad that he is a Mahabhagavad and he gives that kind of rasic, very pure and very elevated parikata, he will become the guru and we will attract us to hear from him in this way. So, just some little points concerning this Ravashima Sundar, Shamananda, Baladavida Vishnu, Ramjakal, Katarubiya's job. See, Samarani Mataji. He brought new book, some printed book, and I was speaking some Rikta and books.
the, all the art of Shula Gurudev that we did, his team did, and the Shula Prabhupada, uh, with descriptions in a um, flash PowerPoint presentation that anybody can speak about in public performances or in your own computer. About 200 or 300 artists. In a few days, there's more books coming. The evidence that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, that Sri Padama Dharma Maharaj is kindly manifesting by Gurudev's mercy. Another Morning Walks book, 2009. And also Srila Gurudev's very ecstatic and confidential discussions with the ISKCON GBC on how to enter into Raghunuka Bhakti called The Hidden Path of Devotion, and also a large quantity of the new revised Bhagavad Gita. And also the three Spanish books are coming very soon. So, Sri Pai Bhakti Vedanta Tirtha Maharaj has requested me to speak about Mahaprabhu and Vrindavan and why he came, and the glory of Srimati Radhika. <laughs> Unlike these other speakers, I have no tears and no melted heart, simply a combination of syllables. So I pray that by your mercy the syllables can come out right, and one day they'll be more than syllables, they'll be reality. As you very beautifully sang earlier, Madhavahe, that by my karma, I'm so fallen that I may be coming back as sometimes as a human being, sometimes as an insect, sometimes as a tree or a worm. But in any birth that I may take due to my innumerable sins, may I always have the remembrance of your narration. So that motto took the complexion and the mood of Madhavi. He always desired that in the form of Krishna. He came as a disguised demigod from the heavenly planet and had Srimati Radhika speak her praying to Sampur. Sometimes he came disguised as a girl singer. Sometimes he would imitate the cuckoos in the tree. Sometimes he would desire to wear her as a necklace or make her camphor and put him all over his body so that he could always be one with her. But he always failed until he finally begged her mercy that please let me borrow your mood and your complexion. And she told him, yes, I will help you, but I will also come as my associate, the daughter of Pandit, and uh, Sri Swarup Damodar and Rai Ramananda. My sakis will come as those associates to help you to experience my mood. So especially in this month, Purushottama became Orja month. That is, a few months ago, every leap year, there's Purushottama Mas which is not actually a month, but which is Krishna himself, Purushottam in himself. Just as Srila Gurudev said, Akadasi is not a day. Akadasi is Krishna himself. Similarly, Purushottam Mahas is Purushottam himself. But he wasn't satisfied being Purushottam. He wanted to absorb himself in the mood and the realization and the rapture of Srimati Radhika, who alone relishes his qualities, his form, his flute playing, his beauty, his pastimes, even more than he does. So Krishna was able to fulfill his desire finally. Purushottama became overwhelmed with Orja, Srimati Radhika. And now in this month, He's tasting everything that Srimati Radhika uh, is in this month. That is, this month is called Orja Mas 
for Borja Brat. Borja means power. That's the Supreme Purushottam, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, can simply desire, and all of his desires are filled by Borja, or Srimati Radhika, or Jaisri. Even his power to desire is also a power, and that also comes from him. Srila Gurudev was explaining to Sri Padmini Maharaj that even his walking, his talking, his smiling, everything is coming from her power. As we uh, hear from Srila Gurudev, that there are so many pastimes that take place in this month, and one of them is Krishna disappearing from the Rasalila and the gopis imitating Krishna's pastimes. They held up their veil just as though they were holding up Govardhan hills. And Srila Gurudev explained that these gopis, expansions of Srimanti Radhika, actually would have the power to lift Govardhan hill if they wanted to. Because Krishna actually didn't lift Govardhan hill, but as you know, Govardhan hill was lifted by the power of Srimati Radhika as Urja. So many pastimes, as Srila Gurudev explains every year, that so many pastimes take place in different years during this month. And it's all by Srimati Radhika's power that Krishna is able to perform those pastimes. In this month, he performed the pastime, as you know, of Damodar Lila. Krishna is called Damodar, and Radhika is called Damodari. She alone has the power to bind Krishna forever. And by her, part of her power, Mother Yasoda was able to bind him for a day. Krishna kills Sankarjuna in this day, in this month. That inspiration was happening by Srimati Radhika. How? Because Sankarjuna tried to kidnap her and the gopis. And she called out to Krishna, save us, save us, in order to bring out his very manly ability. Yes, I will save you. So everything is by her inspiration and then her power. Krishna also, as you know, because Srila Parangurde pretended to disappear on that first day of Karti, the first day of Sarani Aras Purnima. So that Sarani Aras, the most brilliant of Krishna's pastimes, Ras Lila, also took place in this month. And that Ras Lila is Krishna performed it. Why? To bring out the glory of Srimati Radhika. Venavit was also sung by the gopis in this month. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also tried to sing Gopi Geet in the mood of Srimati Radhika. Paramavitam Nandavaravapu Karnayo Karnikaram. And he was drenched with tears, rolling on the ground, perspiring, hair standing on end. And still, Radhika needed to help Krishna further. So, as Sri Gadadha Pandit, Gadadha Pandit was behind the curtain and singing that verse with even more emotion, more tears, more melted heart, and was thus twisting the ear of Krishna and training him how to play her role. Without the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna who took the mood of Srimati Radhika, no one would be able to have the intelligence to understand or enter into Krishna's divine Amra's pastimes, what to speak of attain the bhav of the maid servants of Srimati Radhika, which is the ultimate goal of life. In the beginning of Sri Ramananda Rai's Sambad, there's one very beautiful verse which states that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is just like the ocean of Bhakti Siddhanta. And then that uh, ocean evaporated and turned into the cloud of 
Sri Rai Ramanatha, who then poured another kind of shower on the Swati Nakshatra, which gives ratnas or jewels to that ocean, and gave Chaitanya Mahaprabhu the increased experience Sri Sri Radha Gopinath Ki Jai, Sri Sachinanda Gaurahari Ki Jai, which gave Sachinanda Gaurahari the increased realization of the moods of Srimati Radhika. In that verse, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is called Swabhakti Siddhanta Chayamritani. That means he is the nectarian collection of divine truths in relation to devotional service unto himself. And you know the verse that explains that. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give what no other incarnation or avatar ever gave before since the last coming of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the previous day of Brahma. That is, Swabhakti Sriya, the service of the maid servants of Srimati Radhika. Krishna, as you know, is the taster. He's the object of love, but he's not the reservoir of love. So also, as you know, he could not understand what the love of Radharani tastes like and what the love of Adi Soto or any of his devotees or associates is like especially Srimati Radhika, Premaras Niryas. He especially came to taste that essence of love. But when he came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and became overwhelmed with the moods of Srimati Radhika, thinking that I am Srimati Radhika, then he's able to finally experience the service. He's able to taste the service of the maid servants of Srimati Radhika, who do what kind of service? They rebuke Krishna, they console Srimati Radhika, they arrange meetings, just like you know that there's four Manjuri paintings. I don't know if I should reveal this, because sometimes Gurudev chastises me. He says, I only told you these secrets so that you can do the painting, not so that you can speak, so I hope I'm not speaking something I'm not allowed to, but you know the two end ones. So I asked Gurdjieff that in order to actually make this painting, can you please tell me what they're thinking? So he said, of course, these paintings include laps and laps of pastimes. But one of them is that they just came back from bringing Krishna from Chandravali's Kunch by telling Krishna, Oh, Krishna, if you don't come right now, then there's a very big bull coming and he's just about to kill your baby calf. And if you don't come now, your calf will be finished. So Krishna immediately stood up and said, just now coming, just now coming back. And immediately went. And then these two maidservants brought him back to the abode of Srimati Radhika. So now they're looking at each other, thinking how they just brought Krishna back. So then I said to Srila Gurudev, but I thought Srila Rupa Goswami prays for that service in his Manjuri form. So he said, they're all her followers, so they all can do those same services. So now Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is also not only able to taste the love of Srimati Radhika, but to taste the service of the maid servants of Srimati Radhika. For example, they want to train her. Lalita wants to train her to go out in the dead of night when it's cold and it's raining and there are serpents and many, many uh, muddy grounds and thorns and twigs on the ground. So she engages Rupa Manjari and all her assistant maidservants in throwing water, buckets of water, all over Shumaji Radhika's courtyard, and then throwing thorns, and then mud, and then walking with her with a picture of a uh, serpent on her wall, 
so that she could get used to it and not be afraid. So in this way, they help her walk so that when that night comes, she can very easily go. So by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he gave to sadhaks what nobody else gave before. And then he manifested as our Sri Guru. His Shakti, his power, manifested as Sri Guru, who opened up the doors of Sukadeva Goswami speaking Srimad Bhagavatam, all of our Acharya's commentaries, like this one of Chakravarti Thakur, Jiva Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, who opened up the doors further, and Srila Gurudev opened up the doors further to give us the exact procedures how we can enter into the cleverness of those maid servants' service. So one last thing, Srila Gurudev, in this book that will come out next week, Srila Gurudev explaining how to enter into Raghunuga Bhakti, he says that the root bhav, the bhav that we want, the mood that we want, the root mood, is that I, either I have the intense, yearning, burning greed to be a maidservant of Srimati Radhika, or I already have that mood. So that is called bhava mai. Then, to hear and chant and remember, as you are all so fortunate, to have come to this Parikrama and hearing from all the great saintly speakers about the pastimes that are taking place in those Parikramas. And with the power of Srila Gurudev, who's ever increasingly here, who only pretended to leave, to increase our dependency upon him. So hearing, chanting, and remembering is Bhav Sambandi, which leads to that root Bhav Mai or root mood. So the practice of karti, karti niyam seva, by following the rules and regulations, no quarreling, no criticizing, attending all the programs, worshiping Tulsi, worshiping Mangalarti, no tomatoes, no loki, no sesame seeds, and so on. These rules and regulations are in the category of ba Kul. They must be done and they're favorable for entering that group mood. But the actual purpose, the main purpose of karti, and if it's followed with that main purpose of hearing, chanting, and remembering the narrations of the pastime places and the glories of Krishna, Radha, their associates, Damodar, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then practicing that by the mercy of Guru, and we pray constantly for that. Like Radharani is Uja, she's subbing to a Karenya. She's worshipped by the sun. So Tanananda Prachodaya, we pray to her that please, throughout all the Parikrama places, that please reveal your beauty. Let me see how beautiful you are, and let me experience your qualities, so that under the guidance of Sri Rupa Mantri and my Guru Saki, I may have that service, which is the only time I can be happy. Srila Gurudev said, if we're not happy, it's because we're not in Bhav Bhakti. We're not in our real constitutional position. Thank you. Go pray and Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, in this week, I think necessary, so uh, can speak to me. So, our Parampuja Bhakti, Sishima Bhakti Vedanta, Siddhar Bhakti. Also, Sandak is sitting there, but among all sannyasis who are sitting on dayas, she is the super most senior disciple and devotee of our spiritual grandsire, Mittarila Prasun Kishupar, Sishma Ghopi, Vedanta Swami Maharaj. So actually, she is our spiritual auntie. So our spiritual auntie is Samarani Didi Kija.
उनका पूर्व जीवन को उधार हो जाता है बोले जय गणी पिता था माँ के जीवन धन्य हो जाता है बस सुनिधरा बस अतिरिक्त धन्य ये पृथ्वी भी उसका चरण स्पर्श पाके को भी पुलकित हो जाती है और निर्दल के स्वर के पिता के पिता जैसा जो पूर्वज लोग चले गए जब देखते हैं वैष्णव एक जन्म लिया किस बंस में वो हाथ उठा करके नाचने लग जाते हैं वो हाथ के लिए हमारे बंस में एक वैष्णव संतान जन्म लिया है फिर जब वो कृष्ण प्रेम में उन्मत होकर हाथ उठा करके जब नृत्य करता है तो एक उतना प्रभाव है स्वर्ग में देवता को कल्याण होता है जब उसको कृष्ण प्रेम में उन्माद होकर जब नृत्य करता है बल उसका चरण का स्पर्श पा करके पृथ्वी में अपना जीवन का धन्यान करने वाले हैं जब अपना प्रेम में दृष्टि के द्वारा दर्शन करता है तब उसका नृत्य का दृष्टि में इतना शक्ति है जितने दूर तक उनका दृष्टि जाए उतना दूर तक सारे पाप नष्ट हो जाता है और सभी के हृदय में कृष्ण प्रेम की प्रकट हो जाता है इतने प्रभाव है प्रताहर प्रभाव है कोटि जोजन निस्तार है जैकन किए तो वृद्धाप दास ठाकुर कहते हैं करोड़ जोजन तक एक शुद्ध वैष्णव जन्म ग्रहण करने पर करोड़ जोजन तक पवित्र हो जाता है बोले बहुत अच्छी बात है इसलिए वो जन्म संतान बात मरा नहीं क्योंकि भगवान को दे दिया ना बोले काल चक्र डराए देखा विष्णु दास कभी काल चक्र कृष्ण भक्त को देख कर डरता है अभी उसका नाम उन्होंने रख दिया दुखिया कृष्ण दास नाम रख क्योंकि बड़े दुख से वो सरकार मिला उन्होंने कहा था संतों को सेवा में ठाकुर सेवा में दे देंगे फिर उन्होंने उनको गुरु जी को पास में दे दिया जिसका नाम वो हृदय से इनको पास में आए जब उन्होंने गुरु जी को पास में आए उन्होंने दीक्षा मंत्र ग्रहण किया कभी गुरु जी हृदय से कहते ना कभी ये कृष्ण लीला में कौन है कभी ये शुभ लखा है कभी ये हृदय से हमारे श्यामानंद प्रो दुखी कृष्ण दास जी का नाम रखा दुखिया पहले था उसके बाद में रखा दुखिया कृष्ण दास है कभी ये कौन है बोले ये कनक मंजरी है एक सख्य रस्या भक्त एक मंजरी को सीखा नहीं दे सकता इसलिए उन्होंने फेर दिया किसको पास में बोले श्री जीव गोस्वामी को पास में क्योंकि जो जीव गोस्वामी वो कृष्ण लीला में ये विलास मंजरी है इसलिए एक मंजरी ही एक मंजरी को शिक्षा दे सकती है इसलिए यहाँ पर शिक्षा का विषय है हमको किसी गुरु जी को पास से तब भी हमें जाननी चाहिए श्री रूपो गोस्वामी कहते साधु संत सत्य बरे अगर वो व्यक्ति अगर सजातीय अगर हो हाँ तभी तक एक दूसरे को कोई फिर ये शिक्षा को प्रदान कर सकता है अगर सजातीय नहीं हो तो फिर बहुत गड़बड़ी है हम किसको पास में हम शिक्षा पाने के लिए जाएंगे इसी विषय पर बहुत कुछ पीछे विचार करनी चाहिए ऐसे तैसे नहीं जिसको पास में हम जा करके शिक्षा प्राप्त करने लगे ये भी किसी विषय पर भी बहुत चिंता की विषय है जो गुरुदेव हमें जो चीज देना चाहते हैं अगर उसी भाव के अगर कोई व्यक्ति हो हमें वह चीज दे सकता है फिर तो हमें जा करके वहाँ जा करके हमें शिक्षा आदि प्राप्त करनी चाहिए अगर गुरु जी की एक भावना हो अगर हम और किसी व्यक्ति को पास पहुंच गए जो गुरु जी को भाव से मिलता नहीं फिर तो शिक्षा किया और तो संपूर्ण उल्टा हो जाएगा इसलिए इसी विषय पर हमें बहुत ध्यान देनी चाहिए इसी विषय पर हाँ इसलिए अभी उन्होंने श्री जीव गोस्वामी को पास में आए जीव गोस्वामी ने कहा देख बेटा बगैर सेवा के दवा नहीं मिलता है इसलिए उन्होंने बोले ये पूज्य भवन है सेवा पूज है यहाँ पर झाड़ू लगाओ अभी गुरु जी की आदेश को प्राप्त करके झाड़ू लगा रहे थे अभी जब झाड़ू लगाते हैं क्या होता है ये ब्रज रस है ये राज्य कोई साधारण वस्तु नहीं जो कि चिंतामणि प्रकट सत्म सुखल वृद्धा लखा प्रसत्व सुरभि लवी पाल एवं ये ब्रज धूलि कोई साधारण धूलि नहीं जो एक धूलि कर्म वैकुंठ को कर्म अयोध्या को प्रकट कर सकता है ये ब्रज की एक धूल में इतने शक्ति है इसलिए अभी ये ब्रज धूल बंगला में कहा बता है धूला नहीं धूली ना है गोपी पदर और श्री हमारे रघुनाथ दास गोस्वामी कहते हैं बोले अनाराध्य राधा पदा भोज रेणु अनाश्रित वृंदावन तथा कभी जो वृंदावन धाम है 
कि राधा रानी के चरण धूलि को द्वारा संपूर्ण अभिषिक्त ये वृंदावन था इसलिए अभी जब वो झाड़ू लगाते हैं क्या होता है ये धूल की महिमा के कारण यहाँ से अगर धूल उड़ करके सारा शरीर में अगर सरावर हो जाए किसको द्वारा हम सरावर हो गए राधा रानी की चरण की धूलि को द्वारा हम अभिषिक्त हुए और रो रो करके श्री राधा रानी का नाम को रो रो करके वो झाड़ू लगाते हैं अभी राधा रानी अभी दर्शन करना चाहती है डायरेक्ट देखने की जो बाधा बनाएंगी इसे तो राधा रानी जान सुन करके वो अपना चरने के रूपुर छोड़ कर जाती जब श्यामानंद पर झाड़ू लगाने के लिए गए वहाँ पर चरण की रूपुर प्राप्त हुआ उन्होंने गुरु जी को ला करके दिखाया गुरु जी को विलास मंजरी वो दोपुर देख करके पहचान गए ये राधा रानी की चरण के दोपुर है राधा रानी दर्शन करने का बहाना में दोपुर छोड़ कर गई है तो जैसे बेटा जैसे तैसे व्यक्ति को देना नहीं अगर कोई आए लेने के लिए बोलना जिनका चरण के दोपुर को स्वयं आए अपना हाथों से मैं महिला हूँ इधर लड़का भी देखा राधा रानी का एक पैर दोपुर एक पैर में नुपुर नहीं बोले कहाँ गया अभी ढूंढने के लिए आए देखा ये दुखी कृष्ण का झाड़ू लगा रहे बोले बाबा बाबा हमारे घर की बहू यहाँ पर पुष्पक चरण करने के लिए आई थी कहीं चरने के नुपुर हो गया है क्या मिला है बोले तो मिला है बोले दे दो बोले ऐसे थोड़ी दूंगा जिनका चरने के नुपुर वो स्वयं आए अपना हाथों से मैं धारण करा दूंगा बोले तू कैसे बाबा हो तुम तो घर द्वार छोड़ करके ब्रह्मचारी बना और किसी लड़की को प्यार में हमारे घर की बहू है और उसको चरण में तुम नुपुर को ही ना होगी तेरे को शर्म नहीं लग रहा है अगर अच्छा चाहते हो दे दो तो भैया को बुला करके लाऊंगा लेकिन गुरु जी ने कहा है देना है परीक्षा होगी बोले भैया जो कुछ बोलना बोल दो हम तो केवल अपना हाथों से जिनका चरण का नुपुर है उनको पहनाऊंगा फिर लड़का भी सारे डाल करके बोलती है बाबा तो देना नहीं चाहते उनको तो अपना हाथों से पहनाएगा बोले देखो उनको बोलना ये घर की बहू है ऐसे थोड़ी आएगी बोले हाथों पे काला पट्टी बात फिर वो आए बोले ठीक है फिर स्वयं राधाई वहाँ पर स्वयं आती है और श्यामानंद श्री दुखी कृष्ण का अपना हाथों से उन्होंने राधा रानी का चरण में उन्होंने नुपुर धारण कराया राधा रानी जो जिनकी चरण की नुपुर की झंडार से वेद विदा उपनिषद प्रकट होता है जितने सारे और उनका चरण का स्पर्श भी साधारण बात थोड़ी है राधा रानी का चरण स्पर्श होते ही उसका रोम रोम भी उठा हृदय प्रेम में गदगद हो गया अभी राधा रानी का चरण में नुपुर बहना करके जोर से पकड़ करके रखे बल के राधे जब इतने दूर तक आपने दर्शन दिया है हमें अंतिम कृपा या अंतिम दर्शन भी दो राधा रानी का दर्शन देना ही चाहती थी फिर उनको आपको ऊपर से उन्होंने पट्टी को खोल दिया और दीप पर राधा रानी की उन्होंने दर्शन किया है बोले जय जय श्री राधे बोले श्री राधा रानी की उन्होंने दर्शन करके श्री बलदेव विद्या कृष्ण 